Juan Soto is betting on himself. Just ahead of his second consecutive trip to MLB's All-Star Game, the young phenom reportedly turned down a record-breaking 15-year, $440 million contract extension from the Washington Nationals. Not only did he balk at signing the biggest deal in baseball history, but Soto reportedly never even seriously considered accepting it. Why would the 23-year-old superstar turn down that kind of money? I'm glad you asked. Sit back, relax, and take this in. Let's start with the obvious. Juan Soto isn't merely one of the best hitters in the game today. He's one of the best young hitters the game has ever seen, blessed with ungodly contact skills and plate discipline and serious pop. Soto, who's already a five-year Major League veteran at the age of 23, has never had a season with an on-base percentage below 400 or an on-base plus slugging below 900. That's unheard of. Coming into the 2022 All-Star break, Soto's career OPS stands at 968, higher than just about every other everyday player in baseball history through the same point in their career. In fact, the only other players with at least 2,000 plate appearances and an OPS higher than Soto's through their age 23 seasons are either inner circle Hall of Famers or on their way to Cooperstown. Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio, Mel Ott, Jimmy Fox, Albert Pujols, that's the kind of company Soto keeps. Simply put, he's a historic hitter, and he deserves a historic contract. And yes, on paper, the Nats' $440 million offer would seem to fit the bill. It would technically be the largest contract in MLB history, trumping the $426.5 million extension Mike Trout received from the Los Angeles Angels in 2019. And while it may seem unfathomable for Soto or anyone else to turn down that kind of money, it's actually not that hard to see why Soto rejected Washington's offer if you look at it closely. For starters, on a per year basis, the Nationals offer would pay Soto an average of just over $29 million, which is good money, don't get me wrong, but it's still a ways off from what baseball's highest earners make. Max Scherzer takes home more than $43 million per season. Trout and Carlos Correa take home more than $35 million per season. Corey Seager pockets $32.5 million per year. It's understandable, given his resume, that Soto would want a salary like that, one more befitting of the game's elite players. But wait, there's more. Soto isn't eligible for free agency until after the 2024 campaign. Washington has him for two more seasons after this one, and by virtue of the salary arbitration process, the Nationals would pay him at least $50 million combined over the next two seasons regardless. So let's not think of their offer as a 15-year extension worth $440 million. Rather, it's really a 13-year extension worth, say, $390 million. Except it isn't. According to multiple reports, the Nationals' offer was heavily backloaded, which, because of inflation, means the present-day value of the contract was actually considerably lower than $390 million. All of a sudden, Soto's record-breaking deal looks less historic and more in line with the other top-market, long-term contracts that have been handed out in recent years. Actually, after breaking it down, the Nats' offer bears an uncanny resemblance to the 13-year, $330 million contract that Bryce Harper signed with the Philadelphia Phillies back in 2019. And it makes sense that Washington would effectively model their offer on that deal. Soto, like Harper, is a generational talent and presumptive future Hall of Famer who generates practically all of his value at the plate and does a mediocre job in the corner outfield. Soto, like Harper, will hit free agency ahead of his age 26 season. But ultimately, Soto, like Harper, seems resolved to test free agency rather than ink a long-term extension with the Nationals. And why shouldn't Soto bet on himself? Sure, there's always an outside chance that he could suffer a career-ending injury tomorrow, but barring a calamity, it's virtually impossible to see Soto commanding less than $350 million in free agency. History has shown us that players who are this good, this young, don't fall apart they go to Cooperstown. Every other player with at least 21 wins above replacement and an adjusted OPS of 160 or better through their age 23 seasons is either in the Hall of Fame or is named Mike Trout. Ultimately, if Soto continues producing at his career levels, he's got a chance to become the first player in baseball history to command a half a billion dollars in free agency. Hell, he could shave 50 points off his career OPS from now until free agency and still clear 400 million easy. Basically, there's minimal downside risk in Soto rejecting this deal, 
and there's a good chance he sells himself short by accepting it. In fact, the Nationals reportedly knew that Soto would reject their offer when they made it. And they were right. Now then, the Nationals, a rebuilding club whose owners are exploring a potential sale of the franchise, will look to trade Soto and replenish a seriously barren farm system. And rest assured, if and when that deal goes down, it'll be a blockbuster to end all blockbusters. But no matter where Soto ends up or when he ultimately puts pen to paper, one thing is for certain. The dude is gonna get paid.